Hello, everybody around the world. It's Randy here. I've got Stu Man from Tetra. Um, you guys keep talking about it in the comments. I'm getting keep getting private messages about Tetra. Uh, Randy, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Well, you know, I've been super busy lately, and uh, uh, one of the team members reached out to me and said, "Hey, Randy, you want to interview Stu Man?" I'm like, "Heck yeah!" So uh, we're here. We're talking, and uh, I'm I'm excited to find out about your project. Thank you. Tell us where you guys where you're at and. Uh, Give us a little bit of feedback yeah. about your a little bit of background of what you're doing, why you got into crypto, why you pulse chain, all that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, thanks, thanks for uh, the introduction and thanks for getting together and, and some time. So, uh, oh, we've got Red Squirrel there ready to go <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, um, Tetra is a, is a tool that you're going to be able to use to automate your DeFi, drag and drop, easy. Um, you, we, we've got a, we're developing a system that's going to allow you to um, put together like complex automations and strategies, uh, stuff that you want to run uh, on the blockchain when sort of market conditions reach optimal levels. Um, you're not going to be shackled to your computer. You're going to be able to use it to really free up a lot of your time and um, you know live your life and, and just let Tetra kind of take care of stuff and all, all in a trustless. Um, no, 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 trustless way. No admin keys. You don't need to give up your coins. Um, it's uh, all the all, all the things that we've come to learn in, within the, the ecosystem and how important it is in crypto to you know get involved in these types of projects where um, you know you don't actually need to trust anybody, right? So nope. yeah, yeah. So um, we're we're really excited about what we're building. Um, it's, we believe it's, it's it's breakthrough technology and in terms of you know what it does and and how and, and how simple it's, it's going to be to use as well um so you know we're excited about what we're bringing and uh, development is in full swing uh we're probably somewhere between 30 and 40 percent through the development cycle and we're we're looking to get a public uh, beta out and up there um as soon as we possibly can but at some point early summer um and then you know we'll have some some open testing We'll have people trying to break it and you know battle test it and and then we can get the then we can get the first release out and we're we're going to be off to the races after that so yeah it's exciting times ahead i've never you know i heard that power city is doing something they have some similar features where they're having the automation uh could you give us a mm. can, can you tell us the difference between what you guys are doing and what power city is doing sure thing yeah so so power city's uh amplifier is um, a system that compounds strategies. But these strategies are are tied within their ecosystem. It helps to deliver yield back to people that stake what token. So it, it, it helps to bring health back to the power cities uh, sort of ecosystem. And obviously there's benefits in, in running amplifier for individuals as well. So it's it's um it's a similar idea in terms of the core of what they're doing with amplifier, but our systems um you know, very different in the sense that it allows you to be able to customize any part of strategies. You can run simple uh, DeFi automations. Um, and, and, you know, like simple example could be that you could what, you run what we call like a visual limit order. I use this example quite a lot because it's quite a good example, something that's really quite simple. So um, you could imagine that you wanted to buy some hex and you wanted to get it at a specific price. You could set up a visual limit order and what that would do in Tetra is it would spread, it would spread um, open market buys across mul a multitude of different dexes. So you're not just uh, you're not just sitting there with like what you would have as a traditional limit order. Um, it would that that has to get filled on that on that dex, right? Ours would market buy it across a multitude of different dexes. Much better chance of getting the price that you want. Um, and you're kind of spreading it across multiple liquidity pools as well. So you know. If you set that price, you're setting a condition. You basically tell the system in a block, so easy. I would like to buy hex. This is the contract address, and I want to buy it at this price. And if you want, you can throw in some other parameters there, where the daily volume or the five minute volume is is a parameter um, <laughs> that you want to be part of that too. Then um, you you can do that, right? So I never a heard of such a thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, I mean, it's it's innovative and new, and and what's quite incredible about all of this as well is that um, Tetra is, it, it has endless use case. I mean, we can't even imagine everything that people are going to use this for in the future. Um, when, you, when new technologies emerge um, and other 
new ideas for uh, blockchain, smart contracts and, and things like that and other interactions, then Tetra is, is going to be in a really good position because we're developing it in such a way where it's, it's future proof to allow it to interact with any smart contract and bring and, and bring back that standardized um, standardized user interface that is across is the same across all all multiple um, uh, smart contracts. So, it's still, yeah, so it's, have you used have you used Zapier? That is an excellent example. Te Tetra is like Zapier for the blockchain. Yes, that's what it sounds like to me because I'm a, I'm a social media guy. And I've used Zapier yes. and do this, do that, or whatever it was called. I can't remember, can't remember the name of it. But yeah, that's. It sounds like Absolutely. you're building a Zapier for the blockchain. Exactly. So it's a really, really good analogy. Um, however, Zapier, um, for example, and you'll know this as well. Um, you would need to go in there, and you can only use their sort of pre-customized blocks that exist, if you like, right? So. You know, I want to interact with Facebook and I want to publish information from the CRM over here or whatever it may be. Now, you can only sort of use whatever they actually give you because obviously all of these different software platforms have hundreds and thousands of different uh, variables and, and, you know, fields that would need to be, you know, interacted with or published, right? So when it comes to block, when it comes to the blockchain, those functions and variables are quite limited as a per, per a smart contract. So when... When you use a standard D app, you're only kind of doing like a handful of different things. Obviously, you've got buy and sell, right? Try, uh, transfer, but then you've got stake, unstake, um, and and then when you start to get into more of the complex uh, protocols, you want to open a vault, um, liquidation events, all these kind of things, right? But these these are all presented back in a very standard format, so. It doesn't matter what DApp or sorry, it doesn't matter what contract you're interacting with. The interface that Tetra presents is pretty much the same every single time. So it's it's consistent across different uh, smart contracts. Another another good example is is that if you go on EtherScan and you want to view the contract, and you can actually um, they, they've already got like fields as well as functions, and you can interact with that smart contract right through EtherScan, and th that that display, if you like, is uh, that that UI element is the same regardless of what contract you actually look at. So ours is doing that, but it's making it even more user friendly, intuitive. It's taking out sort of you know you don't need to add like eighteen zeros to the end of your uh, your your figure that you're that you're wanting to stake, for example, things like that. So we're kind of just simplifying uh, bits and pieces, but it's getting that it's getting that easy to use, consistent user interface that is. Um, you know the same regardless of the contract that you're interacting with, and that's that's going to be a, I think that's going to be a big thing just on its own as well. That's cool. I got a question. I mean, this, this is like, um, this is for the users. Say say that Red Squirrel comes up with a really good um, automation that he builds. Mm -hmm. um, this could be future. It doesn't have to be right now. But is there a way that he could uh, go to you guys on the platform, build his own automation, and then get a kickback? Like charge to use the automation? Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly the plan. Oh, so if, shit. If, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've we've already we've we've already announced it. So we've got a we've got a group called the Strategy Guild. We've also got a strategy community that's that's been yeah it's been set up too. And uh, oh no no you're thinking of the Builders Guild. That's a separate that's a separate oh, one. Right? Okay, okay. We, we've we've got we've got strategy guys um, in in another group. Uh, it's a much smaller group, but in any case. Um, all of these guys are going to have the opportunity as well as pretty much anybody that wants to do it quite frankly anybody that wants to create a community built strategy publish it to the to the platform would be in a position where um if there's enough people can they upvote it and it gets traction and people use that as a template right then yes there's like a little a little kickback out of some of the fees and we're not talking huge amounts but it's enough to kind of incentivize people to want to share stuff that they built um and um, you know, if it gets community upvotes and people like it, then that's that's great. And there's a little bit of something for uh, the person that created it as well as a as a thank you, of course, right? Well, that's beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. People like that kind of stuff, you know. They they that gives them the incentive to spend the time to build some really good awesome uh, automation tools. Yeah, very cool. Absolutely. Now, token. Is there a token? No token. What's going on with that? Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a token. 
great thing about the token is is that you don't need to hold it to use the system. So we had a we had a private investment round, no venture capital. It was all people from within the Pulse Chain community, uh, some friends and family and things like that as well. And uh, we raised enough uh, in the form of funds to be able to go ahead and develop the system, make the tools. Um, so there's an allocation of the tokens to those guys. We've got some uh, commitments to a previous sacrifice that we had with the R2 reflection protocol. Um, there's going to be an opportunity for those guys to be able to burn those tokens and move over to Tetra. Uh, and we've got an R1 token that launches on the 1st of March. And you can burn okay. that through the system to get to Tetra as well. But the bottom line is, is that um, it's kind of like, don't don't buy. <laughs> is it that bad? <laughs> no, you're fine. G bangers being lazy. <laughs> <coughs> um, you don't need to hold the Tetra token to be able to use the system. So if you want to use the system, you're just going to need to have some gas in there. Um, you're going to need your capital to obviously start off your strategy. And the fees are collected, uh, very small fees in, in the region. What well, we're, we're kind of saying in the region, about half, half of 1% um, for uh, to run a strategy. But, um, you know, we're not we're not getting tied down to anything right now. I mean, we're listening to the community as well on, on some of this stuff. So um, ultimately... It's going to be available for everybody to use. Yes, there's a token, but don't you know? The, the bottom line here is is that the token is is irrelevant to actually using the, the system. So uh, you don't need to go and buy our token to use that to pay the fees to use the system. That's not how it works. And that was right. that was a really important a really important uh, thing for us to make sure that uh, people didn't feel like they had to you know do something like that. It's it's, it's open for everybody to use. It's a software as a service. And, you know, each time you use it, there's a small fee for using it. It's that simple. I love that. That's way better. Uh, I, I don't mind that projects do sacrifices and have coins because, you know, obviously I participated in a bunch of them. But I also like the other fee model. The The fee model works because when you're not using it, you don't pay. Period. That's it. You don't have, you don't have well, to pay. Well, I pay, I pay, I, I pay $7.99 a month to use Microsoft and I get a great service, uh, you know, what else have you got? There's, there, I'm trying to look at my desktop here to see what I've got. Adobe Photoshop. I've got a multitude yeah. of different things that I pay yeah. monthly subscriptions for, right? So it's like you kind of it's the same thing, but slightly different because you only pay to use it when you want to use it, and you know, and that's probably a fairer model when it comes to the kind of thing that we're doing because it's maybe not the the sort of thing you're going to use 24 hours a day or you know through your entire working day. So you only pay for it when you actually want to use it, right? Interesting, interesting. And uh, I, I see the group is growing pretty well. Um, I'm in there. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. a different kind of Telegram group. You guys got your, your Telegram group like broken down in different sections. It's like, yeah. Usually they up, they pop up and you see everything, but yours, you guys got it. You're, you guys are really into like setting things up. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, the, the idea, so that's actually the community group that I was talking about. So that was, that was a group that was set up by the community for oh. sort of, community strategies and things like that the the, the tetra uh, community group if red squirrel's still listening he can maybe fire the he can maybe fire the link for that sure. telegram group in here but yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of broken down or anybody else that's in there that's got the link would be awesome um um what was i saying sorry yeah so it's all broken down and uh uh different Subjects. sections that's the new yeah. top yeah it's the new topic feature in um in telegram which is really useful so kind of anybody that, that wants to run public strategies or they want to build community strategies that have got some ideas, uh, they can give the admins in there a shout. Uh, like I said, it's a totally community-run group, uh, which is great because I feel like I don't have to be on call all the time answering questions when it's you know people are kind of in there just um, having great dialogue and talking about loads of good ideas. So it's 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 a good it's a good group for for that. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to. Um, uh, go in there and you wanted to create your own community strategies you could do that and uh, speak to the admins and they might give you your own your own sort of sub channel within the group and that's what the that's what the different topics if you like are for is um is that so yeah all good i think it's great thank you i just added bard squirrel as a moderator so you could put the uh the link in there yeah sure. um, first that's uh, this is what is the incentive to get and keep the token then Oh, so the the Tetra token, um, yeah. it's quite simple. The fees that um, are generated by the protocol are returned uh, proportionately to those that hold uh, that, that stake Tetra tokens. So if you had a, a, a bag of Tetra tokens, you could go and stake them, and then uh, you could claim daily 
weekly, monthly, whatever you want, um, the fees that are generated from the protocol. So it's kind of like um, it, it would be it would be your share within the the fee the fee pool, if you like. One hundred percent of the fees are distributed across that across that pool. All right, great. Now, uh, <clears throat> Bets and Crypto had a question earlier asking about the UI. Do you guys have any UI shots you want to share yet? Um, not not at the minute. We've got we're actually working on the user interface right now. Um, so there's things like we, we want to get our um, our block wizard um, finished off, and then there's probably about two or three kind of big things right now that we'd love to get finished, and then we're going to sort of release some screenshots internally within the private groups to get some initial feedback, and then we'll we'll, we'll get stuff up on the website. But um, if you want to get an idea of how it's going to look, you can go take a look at any kind of node-based uh, zero-code programming type things like um, the Unreal Engine. I've, I've got like a node-based programming tool, drag and drop. Um, you connect each each part where you know lines to the next part in the strategy or the next node. It's it's going to resemble that very similarly. All drag and drop, zero code, um, super easy to use. Wow, man! Between AI and drag and drop, man, what our work is getting so much easier. <laughs> yeah. If I had this well, back I mean, in the there's... day, I would have been a multimillionaire years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, there's even people in the community that are asking, um, would there be, you know, an AI plugin or stuff like that? I mean, we're going to have a software development kit and an API. So if anybody ever wanted to build some kind of AI thing that would plug into Tetra in the future, that's, again, it's totally feasible. Absolutely. So there's a refraction launching on 1st of March? Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That, so is that a different coin than the Tetra token? Yeah, but the so the, the way that the way that the the, the precursory projects work in the form of refraction, uh, R two so that R one refraction, R two reflection, and then Tetra in, in that kind of order, and um, you can you can buy R one token. The, the total supply of the R one token will be approximately ten percent of the total supply of Tetra. So if you buy it. You can burn it through the system and ultimately then receive Tetra tokens as a as a straight up uh, swap for that. The liquidity will not be left in there for anybody that gets airdrops and and things like that. The liquidity will be automatically redeployed through the system, so the value that you've delivered to the protocol stays with whatever part of the protocol you're in at any given stage and and time. So it's a really fair way of doing it. We're going to have disclaimers on there saying don't buy R1 unless you want to buy it for if you want to burn it to get Tetra. Uh, this is this is the, the journey to Tetra. Um, obviously, there's people out there that are going to want to try and trade it and stuff, but ultimately, the game plan is really straightforward. If you want to get it, deploy a small amount, stake it, get some free extra, burn it, and get Tetra, and that's it. That's fair. Okay. Um, <laughs> Seek 55, 55, yes. So Red Squirrel put up the telegram. Um, there we go, yeah. Red Squirrel. Yeah. So yeah, feel free to join. Um, so give us the kind of the so everything's going on Ethereum first. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that's what that's. I mean, we're going to be launching the R one protocol on Ethereum on the first of March. So unless unless Richard launches Pulse Chain between now and the first of March, then yeah, we're going to be going on Ethereum first. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but I mean, we are going to be fully supporting Pulse Chain as probably the the second network that um, that will be fully operational on. The great thing is, so um, if we launch our tools before uh, Pulse Chain goes live, then you could effectively be using Tetra before the bridge opens. You could set up some cool ratio stuff, um, which would be interesting if uh, if we got our copies over. Uh, in, you know, if we ultimately launch before Pulse Chain mainnet becomes available. So that would be quite an exciting kind of uh, play as well. Um, we don't know. I mean, we're not in a hurry to beat uh, Pulse Chain so that we can make that happen. It, it, this will take as long as it needs to take. And we've got a really clear plan and set goals. We know we know where we're going with it and things like that. Um, but if, if, the, if, the, if the ducts line up perfectly, then uh, you might find that could be a great opportunity as well. Yeah, I think so. Wake Dog's thinking like me. He said, this sounds like if this, then that for crypto strategies. Yeah, Zapier, that's why I said Zapier earlier. I couldn't remember what if this, then that 
Wait. <laughs> I was like, what, as, what is that? <laughs> as between 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 each between each block. So you, you deploy a block that does something right and then it has to move on to the next block. But then there is an if then what else, right? It's like if this if the price of this asset then goes to X, then go and do this. And that's right. exactly what it does. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, anybody who's been de- working online with companies and stuff for years, you know Zapier and, and if this, then that. So was that was that really what got you guys thinking about it? Was with those, was oh. the, were those software tools? Is that what caused it? No, actually not. Funnily enough, I mean, I've used Zapier in the past, so maybe subconsciously there was something in all of that, right? But I mean, I have, I've built software traditionally in the construction architecture industry uh, in the past as well, which was a, which was a tool that simplified design into a drag and drop sort of fashion that had metadata information, it generated 3D renders, photo, photorealistic stuff and made made that process what was, you know, a really protracted process quite simple and opened it up to, you know, non-technical guys like salesmen and things like that. So I have had experience in building software in the past and, and successfully sort of uh, sold out on that and, and then worked with a company that bought us, right, for uh, about 18 months. So I have experience in, in taking really complicated things and making them easy to use. Um, and I think that's kind of, the trigger for me was, I could see that there was a gap in the market. You look at some of the strategies that like the guys are coming up with, even some of the liquid loan strategies that uh, were published um, a while back. And what I didn't think, what I think people didn't actually realize was is that if you wanted to run those strategies, you're going to need to be sitting in front of your computer 24 hours a day waiting for these market conditions to be right i mean it's just as bad that's as bad as trading right yeah. so if you look at if you look at that like there's actually a hidden problem that needs to be solved and that's what tetra does look, look what pencil dude wrote i can't wait no more staying up with my face glued to the monitor exactly yeah yeah red squirrel says only also only make transactions if gas is at your acceptable limit huh fair yeah that's that's awesome for the ethereum boys and girls out there because who knows I and mean, all, all you guys know how rough it's been <laughs> yeah i I, uh, I unstaked i think about 100 and all right not unstaked but um i minted about 100 million uh hedron yesterday and it costs total maybe 100 bucks something yeah and gas fees it's like this is crazy <laughs> i know and I mean, there's there's definitely optimizations with gas that we want to put in there as well. So, for example, um, there'll, there'll be there'll be there'll be tools within the system where you can roll uh, multiple transactions or multiple things into one transaction to try and help on save on on gas fees as well as other optimizations where there could be pools that um, that execute um, certain things c- collectively within within set ranges, and then gas fees can actually be uh, you know. A lot cheaper and things like that but these are just optional things and it, it really caters for some of the smaller guys on ethereum as well because obviously the gas fees can outweigh the the benefits uh, can it run in um especially multiple step strategies right so um but i mean that's a network-wide problem that's not just a problem that that we're that, that we're going to be um sort of open to if you like and and then you know that's why that's why pulse chain kind of is, is kind of going to solve that right so it's one of the it's one of the things that um is going to help so it's yeah it's it's what it is but i mean we want to we want to make sure that we're optimizing gas as much as possible for people and giving them giving them options that really help to reduce that uh that burden yeah i hope so because it's been painful um, mm. i know that pulse chain was built to help the hex community but all in all, it's really being built to help everybody in Ethereum take some of that load off. And uh, I, I'm not convinced that sharding is the answer, um, especially for Hex, because if, if sharding in Ethereum happens and it does lower the price for stuff on Ethereum, remember, Hex doesn't have um, doesn't have admin keys. So yeah. we can't we can't turn all these Hex stakes into like one charter day or something like I, I have no idea. I'm not a tech guy. OK. But how yeah, I understand yeah. is they, they batch stuff together in a shard. Well, if we're, yeah. if we're unable to do that as hexkins, that means we're left on our own well, and on, we have to on compete the old, with on the, the old, on the old system again as well. Yeah, yeah, I get that. No, I mean, it's, um, 
mean, I've had a look at the overall roadmap for what, what Ethereum has planned. And obviously, you know, they, they recognize that there is problems here. And one of the biggest problems they've already kind of taken away by moving from proof of work over to proof of stake. But, you know, um, there's some problems with that as well, because the validators almost feel too centralized as well, because, uh, you know, who's who has control of that. So um, I think it's still got a lot of evolution. Um, but obviously, I think I think Pulse Chain is, is going to solve a lot of these problems uh, short to short to m mid term as well. And then you might find that some some things that happen with Ethereum, we get those updates on Pulse Chain as well. So we're 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 really going to be really well positioned for the future. Yeah? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we wouldn't have had that if we had if we copied over Binance Smart Chain. Yeah. And and the fact that Richard was patient enough to accept, okay. Or smart enough to accept that E2.0 is here. Maybe we should take that. And, Absolutely. Uh, it, it's going to be worth the extra nine months wait to, to go with E2.0. Because, guys, think about this. Every time Ethereum comes out with an update, Richard just goes, with his team, goes, update. And we get the same updates. Or if it's an update that we don't want, we don't have to accept it. Or, or if it's a security patch as well, right? Yeah, exactly. You've two, you basically, got, you basically got two teams working on stuff simultaneously. So... Yeah, um, and if a security vulnerability does become a you know does does show itself on Ethereum in the future, then uh, we might get a bit of a head start and being able to patch that as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's loads of benefits. I think um, personally, like last year on the, the lead up to the to the merge uh, to ETH 2.0, that there was I was saying this in some of the Telegram rooms and stuff. I was like, I just think he's waiting for ETH 2.0. I think he's waiting to see if the merge is going to be successful. Analyze. I mean, I made the I made this call before it happened, and uh, I never made a song and dance about it afterwards. But I, I kind of felt vindicated within myself. I thought, yeah, he's been waiting for this, right? And I think it's the right thing to do as well. But um, it'll be interesting uh, to see now what uh, when we get V three. It's like, well, we were talking in the green room just before we came in, and Richard uh, still has uh, the pinned tweet in his Twitter right now that says. Um, I'll stop calling the top when I call the bottom, right? And it's still pinned there right now. So, I don't know, is, is, have we got more to come? Who knows? Yeah, he may, I think he thinks there is. But more and more people are, are going to the bull camp. Um, people I didn't expect to. I'm still kind of in the bear camp because I think the macroeconomic is, are so bad that there's no real reason for us to pump. Um, yeah. Post-November, I, I tell all my people that watch my show, they understand post-November is when the elections in the U.S., start to amp up because then that's one year before uh, the Federal Reserve is not going to continue to lower rates, not in a year, an election year, because the Democrats want to keep their power and uh, they're just going light, to lighten the, um, loosen the belt and that's going to bring everything up. The stock yeah. market's going to go up, the crypto market's going to go up, the real estate market's going to turn around. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how it rolls. It's all Absolutely. about politics. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. No, I agree with you completely on the macroeconomic stuff and, uh, We'll just we'll just need to wait and see, and you know people are obviously FOMOing back in, and it could be it could be uh could be the biggest bull trap of all time. That's that's kind of what that's kind of what I'm looking at and thinking, but who knows? Yeah, I'm not worried about. It. I'm in hex. I'm staked. My average year's eleven, yeah. so I'm, I can't do anything about it anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah. Smir Mr. Monty Fontaine says, could Ketra be used so whenever you make a trade, it sells twenty percent of the profit into USDL, then park it in a pool until you need to withdraw for it for tax? Will Tetra work with accounting yeah. software? Uh, it wouldn't work with accounting software as such, but you could you could run uh, strategies and you could siphon off profits or 20% of profits that would account for tax that you may need to pay if you want to and keep that uh, keep that to one side if, if you wanted to. But I would kind of say that um, you probably want to be using as much of your capital as you can to run strategies to extract as much value out of them as well. And then, deal, and then deal with your tax affairs at the end of the tax year or when you actually off-ramp stuff or depends what country you're in and, and what the tax laws are. I'm not a, I'm not a financial advisor, but you can. the, the bottom line here is, is that you can basically um, program it to, to do whatever you want. That's amazing. Oh, jeez. I can see myself messing that one up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like playing Zelda back in the day, you know. <laughs> Did I do that yeah. right? <laughs> It seems yeah, Tetra yeah. might be used to help smaller players take advantage of DeFi opportunities like whales. Will it be possible to pool resources with Tetra? Hmm. 
it is, it is something that we're looking at. The biggest problem with that with that implementation is is that um, the only way that you could really do it is by giving your keys over. But you could do it. So this is where we think the community might step up, right? Because if people within the community pool funds together in a strategy, that strategy can have a multi-sig. Um, it, it's got extra layers of security in there as well. So you can have extra levels of protection if there is like a community pool that want to get together that runs strategies like that. And obviously that provides a huge amount of benefit in terms of gas fees and uh, and other things as well. So um, it's it's absolutely possible. Whether, whether we provide that as a like a staked service within Tetra in the future. I don't know. It's not on a roadmap. It's not going to be a day one feature. But like I'd explained, if community members want to get together and, and do things like that, um, that's totally feasible. Yeah. I don't know about pooling. I'm not much of a pooler. <laughs> I like yeah. DeFi for a reason. Let's keep it DeFi. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, we're, we're never... We're never going to have the system set up in such a way where you need to hand over your coins. It's just an absolute no go. Where it's never going to happen. Um, but the, because because of the flexibility of Tetra, it really would allow you to be able to do anything you want with it. Do you got? Do you remember when um, Gavin Wood and all those guys? Hey, Defiant, Defiant. Um, they had that multi multi key. I can't remember which platform it was called. It was, but they locked up a whole bunch of Ethereum and it couldn't ever get unlocked. Who was it that did that, that again? Sorry, what was it? What was uh, it? I, Gavin, I don't recall Gavin, it. I remember Gavin yeah, Wood, one of the Ethereum yeah. guys. He had a protocol where you could lock up tokens, lock up your Ethereum, and mm -hmm. it was a multi-sig, a multi-sig wallet, and then something happened and they couldn't access their Ethereum. Ouch. <laughs> it was millions upon millions of Ethereum stuck in there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, that was back in the day. And uh, I'll yeah. never forget that because one of the projects that I did the ICO for, because I launched like 40 projects, um, mm -hmm. They had raised $12 million and they had it all in this multi-sig and something oh. happened with an update on Ethereum, I think, and they can no longer access their Ethereum. So this ICO that I did had no money. They lost everything. Oh my it goodness. Was, it was pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, it's, it's that's very... why I, when I think about pooling and multi-sigs, I get nervous. <laughs> oh yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, is that, you know, it, it, it's when I, when I talk about pooling like that, um, it, it could just be like a, a, a group of friends, you know, and, um, we're sort of saying with Tetra as well is is that um, you know it's it's not like your your strategy wallet is is for running your strategies. It's not going to be a place that you're going to keep. It's not a vault. It's not cold storage, right? Okay. It's some it's something that's kind of kind of in between a hot wallet and a hardware wallet. But there is some extra levels of security that could be implied in your uh, your strategy wallet that just helps to protect it. Arguably, if you kept some some assets within that, that if you did get hacked that um, anybody that actually got your admin keys uh, may not necessarily know that that strategy wallet exists, right? Um, and that you have the keys to that to that strategy wallet yourself. Um, and, you know, like there's, there's, there's a, like, so here's an idea that we had as a team that we've kind of got on the whiteboard as like a thing that we might talk about. So I'll, I'll just explain it to you. If you could imagine that um, you run a, you, you, you execute a strategy and, um, Let's say these conditions like get met, but it only kind of goes halfway through, and then it's it stalls because you know the markets change or something. Uh, now, if something was to happen to you, um, and maybe somebody didn't know how to be able to get a hold of that, you could have like a, a countdown. So in twelve months or in two years or however long out, that basically your own strategy wallet can collect up all of the assets inside it and send it to a cold storage, right? So, you know, even if you did get hacked or you you couldn't you couldn't regain access to your wallet, as long as as long as your hacker, if you like, never knew that that strategy wallet existed, you could still be able to get value back out of it if you were to set that up as something in the future. So, again, these are these are just extra kind of layers that could help people in the future and we just want to make these kind of tools available. I mean, that that uh, automatic send at a point in time could also be used for other things because if you run a strategy and you want to take all the, the profits out of that and at, at some point in the future deploy it into a new smart um wallet. into a new uh, strategy wallet to then start executing um you know more strategies so there's you can actually use a feature of the protocol to help to protect yourself um 
and and these are the kind of things that I'm saying like at the beginning here. It's like we don't know what everybody's going to end up using this for. And there's other there's other nefarious things that people could use it for as well. But we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to control, you know, all of that, right? We can we can maybe put some limitations in there that stop uh, people taking advantage of specific protocols and things like that. But you know, ultimately, um, this is a DeFi product and it's available for everybody. And we just we think it's going to be more important for us just to educate people on how best to use it. Um, and, and we hope that that accounts for 99 percent. That would be great. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it then. Um, I don't want to I don't want to cut you too short today, but I, I do have a, a, a lunch. I have to go to lunch. I have five live streams today, brother. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> so, so my friend Markable's here. If you guys remember Markable, the beard, he's back in town. So I'm gonna go have a quick lunch with him before I have my my next live stream. But uh, Stu, could you break it down where we could find where we could find everything about Tetra? Uh, I know that yep. um, Red Squirrel already put the link in the in the chat. But could you tell everyone where to go and where to find you and all those kinds of things? Yeah. So um, the website is the best place to go to te- Tetra one. And um, if you head over there, we've got loads of information. We've got, um, you know, flow charts that show the whole the whole ecosystem from R1 right through. Uh, we've got the social media links, the Telegram links. Um, and I know that uh, Red Squirrel had put the, the, the community strategy group in there as well. So feel free to come along, uh, get involved in the discussion, ask questions. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm around all the time. So, you know, happy to, to answer questions and talk about ideas and um yeah it's 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 a really the, the groups are buzzing and uh, the stuff that's coming out of these groups is just fantastic especially the strategy group it's a really cool place to be so these are definitely places to come and learn more uh, understand what we're building and uh you know come and come and ask questions and we'll, we'll have we'll have um we'll have open sort of amas and the the voice chat can be opened anytime and people can just jump in there and, and have a chat right so yeah it's uh come come and join us all right, guys. Thank you, Stu. I appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, you can, you're welcome to come on my show at nighttime too, at the 10 p.m. show anytime you want. Um, also, well, especially once you guys get going, because any you know, red red squirrel, you I don't, I don't care. Just want to hear some of these strategies and how to implement them, and and be able to share the screen and show people how it works, those kind of things. Because education is where I'm at. So thanks again. Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming on out. Uh, I'll be back on in a couple hours. I think at 3 p.m. I, I I'm streaming with Black Hexkin. And then I'm streaming with, um, uh, what's his name? Access Alive. <laughs> I, I got something else. Someone, someone else. Oh, Seek5555 at 8 p.m. And then my stream at 10. <laughs> awesome. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mad man today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Randy. Well, thanks Cheers. so much for the time. Yeah, thank You're you. You're welcome.